thanks a lot for being here today. What we're going to discuss is really how at Gigaman we're trying to improve security with our security delivery platform. You're going to see in just a minute how this works and how it's connected to the overall architecture. But first, what I want to discuss is detecting a compromise. It is very hard to detect a compromise. When you think about it, detecting a compromise, it requires detecting a series of activities that happen over a certain period of time. The challenge that we have today is that all security tools only have visibility over a certain set of those activities. Most of them do not, are not able to see and comprehend the overall kill chain. So that's the major issue. The second issue that we have is the fact that our network data is exploding on the network. We have seen explosions due to IoT, due to machine-to-machine -machine communications, and so on. At the same time, our security tools have not been able to scale. And that has created a major gap in our ability to identify the security issues. So how do we resolve this issue at Gigaman? Well, first of all, the way enterprises have been trying to target security is by deploying more and more tools, throwing more tools at the problem. Whenever you do that, you actually increase the the complexity of your security architecture. It becomes very hard to identify specific gaps on your network or to see exactly where your security tools are overlapping each other. That lack of visibility has been overcome with Gigaman because what we recognize is the need for a security delivery platform. We plug our security delivery platform throughout the network, either on the spawn port of your switches with dedicated tabs or with virtual virtual tabs on your virtual machines. And we collect the data, and we feed the data to your various security tools. By doing so, your firewalls, for instance, have access to the entire information that's running on the network. You no longer are bound by the location of a specific device or specific tool, because now you have comprehensive end-to-end -end visibility over your network. Let's see exactly how we do this uh, with a Gigaman architecture. So here we have the example of Giga Secure Security Delivery Platform. That platform is actually able to connect to your on-premise data center, to your remote site, to your private cloud, and your public cloud as well. And by, by feeding data from these architectures, we can actually leverage your existing security tools, because those tools are now able to access the entire array of your network. So there are a few benefits to this. First and most important benefit that I would like to emphasize is the fact that you get more efficiency for your tools. This is the example of what happens when you do not have a security delivery platform. And the tools here are connected directly to your networks. What you see is that your security tools have to sift through the data that is being fed to them. And they have to determine which data is relevant to them in which data is not, and they have to ignore. When you do that, your tool is really, really spending time with irrelevant traffic. And their utilization goes down. We actually, at Gigaman, increase the level of utilization of your security tools up to 100% by only forwarding the data that is relevant to them. And it doesn't matter which security tools you have. One could be a firewall, another one could be an email, another one, email threat uh, detection, another one could be, for instance, a user behavior analytics. We're going to feed the right data to the right tools. And in the end, you get 100% utilization on your investment. So there are a few other benefits that I'm going to go quickly over about the security delivery platform. I just mentioned optimized security. Another one is protect your investment in legacy tools. You can, for instance, deploy 40 gig in your data center and keep your 10 gig security tools. The security delivery, delivery platform is going to, to reduce the scale, downscale the 40 gig to 10 gig and feed that to your security tools. So your legacy investments are extended in the life cycle. Process once feed to many tools. So you process the data on the delivery platform. Let's say, for instance, you decrypt the data with SSL decryption. And now you can feed this to multiple tools at the same time or successively in the order that you decide. 
We also can increase the resiliency of your security infrastructure. We have the option to change the path of your data on the platform. Let's say, for instance, that one of your firewall goes down. What happens to the other, the rest of the security chain? Well, you have the option now to change the path of the data to either a backup firewall or to just switch to the next step in your security chain. So your whole security chain stays up. We get consistency. I mentioned that physical, virtual, and cloud. You can manage all of it through the single security delivery platform. And we also ensure a strong compliance because we can mask, hide, or replace data that you deem sensitive, things like social security number, uh, card numbers, and so on. And, so, and out-of-band tools are not able to access that, privacy, that data, and pro privacy posture is preserved. So let's talk a little bit more about Under Armour, because here we have a specific use case from one of our customers. And Alex is going to detail with you how Gigamon has changed their security posture. Great, thanks, Tom. I'm going to try, in a very high level, kind of explain how Under Armour has deployed Gigamon in their infrastructure. So just to give you a quick overview of where Under Armour is. You know, we're a 20-year organization. We're well known for our shirts and our shoes. We also own Map My Fitness and My Fitness Pal, right? A lot of digital app type environment. So there's a lot of digital applications being produced there as well. We are a global company with offices in Europe, Asia, Latin America, as well as uh, United States. Our global presence includes Connector Fitness, that's the, the app manufacturing side, a bunch of retail stores all over the globe, as well as our e-com platform, both international and the US side, right? Okay, so as with every other security team that you guys come across, the team is responsible for top to bottom, right? Keeping the wheels on the bus, making sure the, the operations goes on smoothly, monitoring and alerting on events that are happening, triaging and incident response, as well as doing some red, red blue activities, as well as uh, hunting for events on the, uh, in the environment, right? Not just strictly looking for alerts that are popping up. And that we do across all of our infrastructure, right? Goes to the corporate infrastructure, across our e-com international and US, the connected fitness platform that we run, a lot of our retail space, and now heavily into the cloud as well, right? So as we got some of these responsibilities tuned up, we realized there's a few business challenges the security team needs to address. And there were some te technical challenges as well, right? We were a very, very fast growing company. And I've been with Under Armour for about three and a half, close to four years now. We have grown immensely, and we have been in multiple countries, continents, and we have a global footprint. The problem with that is a lot of our vendors cannot support these international sites that we are going into. So we need to address that, that equation of how fast can we deploy our security stack into some of these places that we were going into. Our growth was asymmetric. We would have a, a region where we would spend a lot of money in, and then we would, we would move into another area and we would spend just, just bare minimum, right? So the, the, cement, the growth wasn't there with regards to a, a, a flat growth in different areas. And then we were very low tolerance to big network changes, mostly because we had a lot of legacy gear. The team wanted 100% visibility at the gates. We wanted to know what was leaving and coming into our, into our environment. We really wanted to understand that. And then we also wanted to have control over that traffic, right? If we're not controlling it directly, we wanted to have the ability to control that traffic when it was seen as bad. We believe in signature-based detection. We, we like it, we do it, but I think we need to augment that with behavior and uh, threat intelligence on top, actionable threat intelligence. So we needed a platform to provide us with that capability to assess some behavior analytics for trusted traffic as well as actionable intelligence that we can feed. And that all comes down to you cannot hunt for bad traffic if you can't see it. That's basically what it, what it comes down to. Okay, why do we go with uh, something like a Gigamon? We wanted modular and flexibility. As I mentioned, we were going into countries and we were going into spaces that we didn't want to invest a lot of money into until we know for sure. So what these guys allowed us to do was buy the bare minimum that we needed instead of just buying the big honking box that we didn't need at that time. If we really needed to expand, we could obviously do so. 
it was scalable for future growth. If we decided to go from a small pipe to a medium to a large pipe, it would absolutely accommodate that so we didn't have to rip and replace gear. The interface was very intuitive to use. We have a small team, and the team was pretty racked up with, uh, with regards to a lot of tools that we are managing. And this was one of those things where we didn't want another tool that was very, very complex to manage and it made us very easy to use this. And of course, the low failure rate and very few updates. We really liked it because the less we update, the less downtime we have, the better our network resiliency would be and security won't be frowned upon, right? And it really fits the UA model. It's basically what we, we kind of stand up with. The other business aspects that we really enjoyed was the relationship that we have with the team. We have an excellent relationship with our, our sales team as well as the leadership up the chain, right? We have good visibility into the roadmap and the future potential that the, the, the box would provide us. So that provided us with a great insight into where the company is taking visibility into that we could adjust to, or we could actually have relationships with the team to walk them through where we want the company to take their next uh, platform to. And we had ready access to resources. That was the best part of it. If we needed to make a quick call to ask a quick question about something, the team was always available for us to help out. So let me quickly get into how we have these bad boys deployed in our environment. So we have them in our regional gateways. Gigamon sees all traffic that comes in and leaves our environment, right? So we have them deployed in line, and we have them um, feeding our Cisco IPS as well, right? So any traffic that comes into our DMZ, any traffic that goes inside our environment, any traffic that leaves our environment, they will all be spanned or directly inlined into our Gigamon, right? So we have this whole minimal care and feed approach. It was very much of a set it and forget it kind of scenario. The visibility that this, this product provides us is, is where, where it really shines. We actually have a few behavior analytics tools that we run that Gigamon actually feeds raw data to. And the tool just needs raw data, and this was the best approach to do it. It's not just NetFlow data, and it, it has the capability to do it, but the tool required raw data that we just need to span ports into. And that was, that was an amazing way to kind of get the data that the tool needs. And we actually get that data from all the span ports that we have enabled into the Gigamon as well as the inline ports. There's a couple of tools that I want to talk about. Talos, uh, most of you are familiar with the Cisco Talos program. And we actually have a feed that goes to them uh, to a box that they have on our DMZ that looks at our traffic. It allows us to have visibility, allows us to have actionable intelligence into traffic that moves in and out. And Gigamon's actually allowing us to do that feed. At the same time, it allows us to grab PCAPs of interesting traffic. So our behavior analytics tools would fire on a key signature, and we should be able to quickly PCAP that traffic to see what is going on on the left and the right side of that event. And Gigamon actually allows us to do that as well. And this is a quick highlight of how we have the tool deployed. This is the inside switch, and then we have the Gigamon feeding that switch, and then all of our inline tools and offline tools are being fed straight out of that HC2. And on the outside, I think the only thing that's missing is another switch and then the firewall and out. Great opportunity for us to take any of these tools down when we are doing management on the tools. So we have no break in traffic, right? Okay, so what we really liked, right? Low overhead on the network. We don't have to span the switches if we don't need to, right? We could obviously go to a tap mode and get the traffic out. We could also get NetFlow right out of the Gigamon module, so if you don't really need the switches to do overtime work, it's an opportunity for you to quickly let the Gigamon module kind of do the work for you. Very minimal configuration. We could feed Gigamon traffic, or very surgically take traffic that we are very much interested in, from subnets or type of traffic, port protocol, et cetera, and feed the tools that we really want to extensibility, right, and scalability. You could actually bring in any other tool that you want to, whether it's for a networking scenario or for a security scenario, you could just plug right in and you could feed the tool. And again, I call it all the beasts that we have, right, all the different signature-based and behavior-based tools that we run in our environment, we feed right off of this, uh, this, this uh, Gigamon module. 
a lot of the traffic that we run are, are deduped within the Gigamon module so we don't have multiple spans feeding in multiple traffic and we are seeing it multiple times, right? So we can actually dedupe that traffic. Um, and then the last one there is our ability to swap an inline tool without downtime, right? So we can just bypass the traffic going to the tool and take our times um, fixing the gear or upgrading the gear. Okay, a couple of other capabilities that we were looking at uh, that we haven't quite uh, deployed yet is the offline decryption capability. You could actually offline the traffic, store it someplace, decrypt it, and then look for scenarios within that tool. We could do payload filtering, definitely do net flow, and then we were really looking at threat intelligence and behavior intelligence when it comes to traffic being fed from Gigamon itself. All right, what are we looking for in the future, right? So we are heavily going into the cloud and I wanted to have the same visibility that I have on the landlines, on the network infrastructure, I want that in the cloud as well, right? So I don't want cloud to be something that needs to be managed separately. I want that whole visibility in that same space. So one of the things that we are working with Gigamon on is bringing in visibility from AWS and Azure, that whole plane into that same Gigamon module and the Gigamon visibility plane so we can feed those same tools. A Couple other items that we were looking to do, dynamic threat feeds, right? So we have our own intelligence that we collect that gets shared by different teams, et cetera. We were trying to get that to be fed into, potentially into a module to kind of start looking at traffic uh, and alerting on it. We would also like to see our blacklist uh, being put in as well, right? So because Gigamine kind of sits in the middle and sees all that traffic, it's a great opportunity for them to see and alert on some of this stuff. And the last two that we have on the right side is, you know, we're about to deploy StealthWatch in our environment. StealthWatch tool can actually take NetFlow data directly out of the Gigamon module, and then we can just dump it right into StealthWatch and start looking at traffic that's traversing our environment. And NetFlow doing it at Gigamon and not at the switches, and letting the switches do the switching and not copying traffic and, and, and start sending it our way. So that's the future path that we are taking. These are some of the pie in the sky stuff, like stuff in the middle, things that we are kind of working with the Gigamon team to kind of understand how we can do some of that capabilities. Tell us a little bit more about your experience. So when you deployed Gigamon, did you have certain expectations and how were these expectations different from the reality? Yeah, so when we were, when we were looking at a product to solve our, our security visibility, scenario. We also wanted a product that sits in line. We also wanted a product to do multiple other things and, and, and kind of help with the other teams as well. So the networking team really uses this product for application visibility and application awareness as well. They also look at it from an end-to-end -end traffic control as well as to see what is happening with that traffic. So some of, this, some of the benefits that we are gaining from this is being transferred over to the multiple teams that we have within the organization. Okay. Very good. And how did Gigamon change the reality of your team? Did you make any changes to your team? Maybe spend more time, maybe freeing up some costs? Yeah, so the visibility that we gained and the, and the ability that we have to feed multiple tools, right? Instead of having, instead of having multiple spans coming out of the switches and feeding multiple, multiple tools, Here's one tool that gets the data and I can span as many as I want and not even, not even cost of imper, right? So our ability to see more and detect more was what brought in with the Gigamon being displayed in the middle. Okay, very good. And what is the case for senior management? I mean, how, uh, how was senior management convinced of making the investment with Gigamon? Right, um, now that's a toughie, right? So we, we showed the, the visibility portion, uh, but at the end of the day, the amount of uh, downtime is, I think that's what sold it, right? So we, we brought in the whole, look, we will need inline tools, and if you place a gigamon in the middle, we can reduce the amount of downtime when we take these things down for servicing. So that, that I think, was the, was the big clincher, the big winner for us. 
Awesome, thank you very much, Alex. No, absolutely, thank you. You just heard from one of our customers, Under Armour, but do not just take our word for it. What I want to emphasize here is that multiple, multiple analyst firms and customers have really, standing, have really been standing behind Gigaman. Here we have the example of Gartner. Gartner has put the visibility platform and the notion that you have to have visibility to have at the core of their security architecture. Uh, another example here is Forrester. Forrester has really built a very strong case for the return on investment with a visibility platform. Another one is IHS Market that has just recognized Gigaman as number one, the market leader, and, and by far, as you can see, in the visibility platform, and so on. I mean, you have Gartner, Amazon Web Services, ESG, all of them stand behind Gigaman. Learn how you can improve your own security posture with Gigaman. Thank you very much.